Welcome back. This is week four of inverse methods in heat transfer. And we are going to look at in this short video, a simple nonlinear inverse problem in heat transfer. So this is supposed to motivate what happens for the rest of the week. Um, as we had seen last week, all the problems that we had considered were simply using linear models. We are going to look at a practical case where we'll actually have a nonlinear problem. Um, that is nonlinear in parameters. Please remember, uh, we had discussed uh, in the last couple of weeks extensively the fact that nonlinearity means nonlinearity in parameters. So, what we want to look at is a case where the forward model uh, naturally throws up a nonlinearity within heat transfer. So, here is a simple case. It's a sort of constructed case, but nonetheless, even in a simplified model, you can see that this kind of nonlinearity can occur very naturally even within heat transfer. So let's take a case. Uh, let's say you have a desktop PC or you have your mobile phone. Um, if you open up your PC, you will see these chips. Um, and on them, you will see some heat sinks uh, or basically something like a fin. This is in, supposed to remove the heat away uh, from the chip. Now, you might recall this uh, incident a few years ago, which had happened with Samsung phones, where if you have too many apps running, it would actually spontaneously catch fire. And that's the, the reason for that was that there was not enough thermal control. Um, in a desktop PC, you will in fact find a fan um, close by to the chip. This will not always be active, but in case there are too many programs running, you will see this sound which sort of starts and the fan switches on and it's sort of meant to cool down uh, the chip. So you have a few cooling uh, mechanisms, you have, of course, the fins, and then you have the fan. This is generally supposed to remove both passive as well as active cooling takes place of the uh, heated chip. Now, if you notice this problem, and we will try to abstract it into a simpler problem so that we can make a simple forward model. The full solution, of course, involves a full scale thermal modeling of the system. But let's look at a simpler case. So the simpler case is like this. Um, you see the heat transfer modes which are active here. You have, of course, got uh, heat addition or heat generation. This happens when apps run on your chip and that generates some Q. Okay. On the other hand, you have cooling. Uh, you have convective cooling. We can ignore, uh, let's say, something like radiation. And you have this convective cooling, which is taking place. OK, so these are the two things that are going on. And we are going to assume that we are dealing with a, a lumped model. We had discussed this uh, sometime in the first week. So we will deal with a lumped model. So let me make up a simple lumped model of this. You can assume that this is somewhat like the chip and the fin system. Um, it's kept at some constant temperature T. So that is. This temperature is spatially constant wherever you keep a thermocouple roughly the same temperature is obtained of course this depends on biot number etc which you would have seen in heat transfer since this is not a full course on heat transfer i'm going to assume that you know these basics of uh, heat transfer already now we can abstract the heat addition within it uh, the heat addition that is being caused due to the apps running as some internal source of heat addition so let's call that q and of course, outside, you have these cooling effects, both due to the fan and due to general convection or due to the fins. So let's say some convective average convective coefficient is H. Let's say outside temperature is T infinity, which is cooler, and inside temperature is T, which is hotter. Now, if we want to make, like I said, a lump model of this, and the lump model is inherent in assuming this is constant in space, um, then we can look at all the terms which are active and say here is the forward model. As you saw in the last video, in order to solve any inverse problem, you actually need a, a forward model. So the forward model is like this. Uh, you have some mass. This mass could be of the uh, chip plus the fins plus the sink. Um, and MCP, CP is the specific heat. And this is changing in temperature. So you have the enthalpy MCP dt by dt. And if you just had no heat addition at all, 
this would be losing uh, its heat due to convection. So you will have minus H A uh, T minus T infinity, but of course you have heat addition also. So we can add a Q to it. So this is a source term and this is a sink term. So this is the source. And in some sense, you can think of this literally as the sink for which. Uh, so this model is a ODE as you can see. This is the temperature model. Now, what sort of inverse problem can we solve with this? So the inverse problem could be something like this. Um, let us say we run an experiment and at various time points, T1, T2, T3, so on and so forth, we actually measure the temperature kept uh, you know, at, at the body. So you could have one single thermocouple or multiple thermocouples and find out an average temperature since we are taking a lump model. And uh, you can measure T at T1, let's call it T1, T2, T3, etc. So this is the actual measurement. And what you want to find out are properties like what is Q. Uh, you could ask what is H or you could ask what is Q and what is Cp. So these two questions, these would this could be the inverse problem. So the inverse thing is given measurements, find some parameters. Let's say find out how much heat is being generated, or what is the convective coefficient of this uh, environment? What is the effective convective coefficient of this environment? Now, of course, to do this, we need not just the differential equation, but we need a forward model which is like given q and h what is t okay so we we need that uh, model that's really how we did the slab problem also so unfortunately this happens to be in a differential equation now later on when we come to something called physics informed neural networks we will actually see how to go about solving this problem right from the differential equation end when we don't even know the solution but right now for conventional solvers and also to motivate why we need nonlinear methods, we are going to look at a solution for this temperature. So the equation once again was MCP, derivative of uh, temperature with respect to T is minus HA T minus T infinity plus now we make a substitution. Um, this is again a standard substitution um, within heat transfer. Let's say theta is T minus T infinity. We did something similar for the fin. And this of course tells you that uh, derivative of T with respect to time is the same as D theta DT. I will call it theta dot just for convenience. Okay. So this gives us MCP theta dot equal to minus h a theta plus q. Um, I'm going to divide the whole equation by MCP. So this is just for convenience. h dot theta dot plus h a by MCP theta equal to q by MCP. So let's call this equation 1. So we need a solution for this equation. Uh, there are multiple ways of solving this equation. Um, what we will do is we will just multiply both sides by e power h a by m c p times t. So this will give us theta dot e power h a by m c p t plus h a by m c p theta. All these tricks uh, are available within, I should have put a e power h a by m c p 
ಟಿ ಕ್ಯೂ ಬೈ ಎಮ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಇ ಪವರ್ ಎಚ್ ಎ ಬೈ ಎಮ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಟಿಪಿಕಲಿ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಡೆರಿವೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ uh a constant term on the right hand side and a term that depends on theta of course you might have seen spring mask damper systems that look like mx double dot plus cx dot plus some constant plus kx equal to 0 so all those systems are second order systems you might have seen differential equation solutions for this in case you have not i am just deriving it uh, just in this case in order to modi- motivate the non linear regression problem in case of exams in case you need some special thing or some special substitution like this it will be provided okay in case you are writing the exam for this course all right now if you notice carefully the left hand side here can be written as d by d theta or sorry d by dt of theta multiplied by e to the power h a by m c p t okay why is that quickly consider this uh, the derivative of uh, one multiplied the other is derivative of the first term so this will be theta dot times e to the power this whole thing let's call it t by tau plus uh, this term which is ha by mcp multiplied by e to the power ha by mcp t the whole thing multiplied by theta which is the same as this okay. so this is a quick check that you can do and that's how we derive uh, this term and that's in fact why you multiplied with this uh, exponential function again in case you have done a differential equation course or in other courses you would have seen this sort of substitution okay so just for simplification let's call e to the power h a by m c p t because this term is going to repeat again and again as e to the power t by tau so where tau is what's called the time constant of the first order system which is mcp by ha okay so using this we get d by dt of theta e to the power t by tau equal to the right hand side q by mcp e to the power t by tau so we can integrate both sides so this gives us theta e to the power t by tau is q over mcp all of these are assumed to be constants integral of e to the power t by tau dt all right um so let's call this equation 2 so theta of course is theta as a function of time e to the power t by tau q over mcp you can integrate this term the integral of this term is of course tau e to the power t by tau and the integral is from 0 to some time t so if you open up the right hand side q mcp in substitute t so you will get tau e to the power t by tau minus at t equal to 0 this is just 1 so you get minus tau this is theta of time e to the power t by tau so dividing both sides by e to the power t by tau you get theta as a function of time equal to q tau by mcp 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau okay and uh, this immediately tells us theta by tau substituting for tau which was mcp by ha so we basically get q by ha 1 e to the power minus t by tau okay so this is our forward model now this forward model has if you can look at it it basically has two parameters it has this parameter q over ha 
we can call this parameter as w naught or a we have this other parameter tau uh, we can call 1 by tau as b or w1 so in that case we can write this in the form y hat equal to a into 1 minus e to the power b x where x is time our predictor variable and uh, y hat is basically our theta the predicted variable y hat is theta our predicted variable and a or w0 depending on what we find convenient is q over h a and uh, 1 over tau or b is uh, sorry um, b or w1 is 1 over tau so these are the parameters of the problem so a and b are parameters this is what we try to find out in our inverse solution now the deal here is that this model it is a non-linear model what is meant by non-linear non-linear means non-linear in the parameters that is this is not in not linear in a or b notice that it's not linear in either a or in b okay, so or you can treat it to be so, somewhat linear in a in that you can write this as a minus a e to the power b x but this is not linearizable you cannot take log you cannot do anything clever and somehow turn it into a problem which is linear in a and b this is exactly why you need non-linear regression okay so there is no simple solution to this just like we did linear regression we will have to do non-linear regression unfortunately for non-linear regression normal equations don't work because normal equations work because you had a system of linear equations okay so this is a system of non-linear equations uh, what do i mean by system of non-linear equations now notice for each x or for each time you have a predicted temperature so you'll have multiple x's multiple times at which we have multiple temperatures i will show you an actual example later on in this uh, week and you have to solve a regression problem for these two parameters a and b and you can't do it in any of the methods that we have seen so far so what we will do in the upcoming videos is we will set up a systematic way to approach this so the normal equations were direct approaches as i said earlier this will not work so we have to use an iterative approach which we will start in the next video so the iterative approach we will start with will be called gradient descent first we will apply gradient descent to the linear case then we'll apply it to this non-linear case and then we will see an even better method called the gauss newton algorithm uh, which we will also develop so that is the development which is planned for this week so i hope to see you in the next video thank you mm -hmm.